What's good, YouTube? It's your boy Brian Felix here, bringing you guys another banger video, man. Make sure you guys like, comment, share, and subscribe. Comment down below any questions, any concerns. So, I actually forgot to film the intro, so that's what I'm gonna do now. I'm actually editing the video that you guys are watching now. So, sit back, relax, enjoy the video. And in this video, we're gonna go ahead and just show you guys our detailing van, how everything operates, and kind of just show you guys a closer look at how things are, you know, strategically thought of and everything like that. So if you wanna see an in-depth video on us using the equipment and how easy it is to get set up and stuff like that, make sure you comment down below to number two and I'll go ahead and make that video happen for you guys. But without the further ado, let's get into the video and let's go. All right, so this is the passenger side door here. This door does slide open. So we're gonna go ahead and slide it open. And this is what we have kind of sorted on this side. So this is the water tank here. And one thing that I love about the water tank is that it has a flow valve. So this right here is actually a flow valve that's inserted inside the tank. And it's like a little globe looking thing. It's kind of hard to see and tell because it's already in the tank. But what it does is it stops the water from overflowing after a certain point, which I believe is the point where it's at right now, which is 60 gallons. So we're probably going to get like 62, 63 gallons and it'll stop the water because one thing that used to always happen was i used to always overfill and used to over you know lead to the ground and flood the seeds and stuff like that so this is very 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 important if you're going to go ahead and install something like this routers details did this for me so i can't really tell you how to install it all i know is this is a life changer and a game changer so if you don't have one on your water tank definitely invest in one and have someone set it up for you now connected to the water tank we have our Seaflow water pump right there. And Tony did all these angles, 90 degree angle stuff and stuff like that. But you guys can see the water pump water flows through that way, which is going through the water uh, pressure washer. And then it flows this way, which is what it's getting water out from. So just to show you a little bit more, this is, the use, this is what I used to fill up the water tank. Just this random hose here. But we have... The attachment here, this is actually a hole that was already pre-made from the water tank. And the water tank simply, you know, you fill it up with water and then you have this little connection here, which is gonna go ahead and bring water out from the tank. And with the pump, it'll suck up the water and then it'll go through that hose through the pressure washer. So that's kind of what it is. This right here was actually added as an extra uh, because I wanted something to quickly and easily fill up buckets so I can just turn this thing here and water comes out. And then same thing for here. I could just, you know, turn this water off and turn it on if I have to, which I never do. I just always leave it on. Now, since we're still talking about the water, the water tank, this is also something that I bought here. I'll list it down below for you guys on Amazon so you don't build up any carbon and it stays fresh and clean. Now, attached to this is a quick attachment. So we just quickly attach it there. And then we have our hose that connects to here. And then we have clean, smooth water going into the water tank. All right, so now this is the driver's side. This is what we have over here. So like I said, this hose right here goes through the pressure washer and then you can start washing cars or whatever you gotta do. So like I mentioned, the hose is right there. You guys can see it's clear. It's coming from the water pump and then it's coming up through here to there pretty simple pretty self-explanatory i promise you guys it's not as hard as this may seem just make sure you buy a water tank make sure you buy uh the proper and correct water pump which i'll link the one that i have this is a 65 gallon i bought this in person at harbor freight for like 300 bucks might be different now it's 2022 everything is different all right so still thinking uh talking about the water pump right in the water so this is connected through there and then we go around the back over here and since our water pump isn't turned on, there's no water that actually will come out of this. But you would actually get, you know, water coming out of this once the pump is turned on. And then you go ahead and turn on the pressure washer with this big button there. And then you turn it off with the smaller one. So that's pretty much how that works for the water system. Uh, you turn on the pressure washer right here. Make sure you turn on the water pump, which for in our case would be turning on the remote here. This would turn on the water pump here if the generator is gone. Turn it on. Water will start coming out here, right? Water will start coming out, and then we'll press this to turn it on. 
and we will be ready for washing. All right, so our water tank is not empty, but just to show y'all real quick how easily and simple it is to fill it up, I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Just set it up and show you guys what it looks like, all right? So let me bring the camera a little closer. So y'all can actually see. All right, so we have our water uh, hose here, and then we have the filter. So I'm gonna just connect the filter and the water hose right there. And then it's already connected. Now I'm gonna go ahead and put this quick disconnect into the insert that I have right here. So we'll do it with one hand and boom. All right, so it's locked in there. Now, if you don't have any source of like water spigot or water source at your apartment complex, I just so happen to, which I'm truly blessed to have one. Um, but yeah, so we have one right there. You guys can see it. So we actually have one right here. And all I will I would do would be connect this, turn it on, and then simply just let the water fill up. Honestly, you guys. So I'm not gonna do it because our tank is actually pretty full right now. So I'm gonna just leave it as is, and hopefully that cleared up some stuff for you guys and made it more more clear, more get a, get a better understanding on how the water pump works and the water tank and stuff like that. All right, so another thing that I enjoy about the setup is gonna be this generator slide out, of course, right? So we have these little little hooks down here that we could just pull out the generator with. So you guys can see, we pull these little blue tabs up and it loosens up and then we just pull it right out and it locks into place right there. Now, this is very efficient when you're trying to fill up or when you, you know, because back in the day, honestly, when I used to, you know, detail my own, I was by myself, I used to have to take the generator out the van so it wouldn't have a lot of exhaust and stuff like that inside. But now we have the exhaust actually pointing out this way. A lot of people actually, where's the exhaust coming out from? It's literally right here and it's out of our way. Like it's literally just by itself there. We really don't ever really walk to this side unless we have to bring out the steamer or maybe even the canopy. But even then, the generator probably won't be on at that time. So, yeah, just a little side note. So, being that the generator is out, it's also very quick and easy to put gas in it. So, I'm going to put some gas in it because we actually need some for today. I'm going to dump it in there. And our gas cap for the van is actually on the same side here. So, once we finish this, if we're at like a gas station or something, we can just close this door and you don't have to you know move around try to find another spot everything like that it's simply all right here on the same side so big shout out to tony for thinking about stuff like that much appreciated brother all right so i try to get a lower angle so you guys can understand this so to push this back in we just lift these two handles up and push it back in there or i guess slide it back into this place until we hear a click where it's locked in there so we're gonna push it in and you heard that click at the end, that means it's locked in there. This thing is not gonna move anywhere. Now, I did have a situation where one of my employees forgot to slide it all the way in. They just put it in there and they thought that, you know, they assumed it was locked in. Now, if you don't lock this in, you're driving and making turns, this generator will still slide. So every time you make a turn, it'll hit the door or, you know what I'm saying, might cause damage to your door. So just keep that in mind if you ever were to install, have something like this in your van. But overall, I give it a 10 out of 10. It's like a big game changer. I don't need to lift anything heavy every single car, every single day. It gets hard and it gets wear and tear on your lower back and stuff like that. So I definitely recommend you, you know, potentially installing something like this or having a professional install something like this for your detailing rig. All right, so one of the other things that I enjoy about the van is how easy it is to get started, right? So I just pulled up here and i don't have any cars to detail right now i'm just trying to film but I, let's say we're about to detail a car right all i simply would do is open up all of my doors just because it's easier to kind of have a overview of you know everything and you don't have to unlock or anything like that so everything is already open here so what i'm simply do is go ahead and get the generator going so things are going to get a little bit loud but i'm gonna go ahead and show y'all how the remotes work and stuff like that so on this side, the only thing that we have to take out is gonna be this here. And then we have these buckets right here. So this is gonna be our wheel bucket and our wash bucket. And this is just the cooler that we carry just to have drinks and stuff like that. 
So we're gonna put these two things to the side for now. So we have access to our generator buttons and stuff like that. So this is our generator right here. This is the Predator, Predator 3500. I'm sorry about that. I paid about 1100 bucks with warranty. And if you don't get warranty, then you're playing yourself. Make sure you get that warranty, you guys. So we have our buttons. The only thing we're gonna mess with is gonna be in this area right here, all right? So you guys can see it says start, run, off. So we're gonna put it on start to, you know, first start it up. We're gonna make sure this is on on and then we're going to make sure we press this red button here because it's going to be our starter all right so we're going to press start once it turns on we're going to move this to run and now it's going to go ahead and run one thing that tony from routers detail did teach me is to let your generator warm up when you're using it there's a lot of power a lot of electricity going through it so you want to make sure that it's capable of it just like when you're working out you want to make sure you warm up your muscles Maybe you want to warm up on a treadmill, or on a bike, or whatever it may be. But just know that the same way you warm up your body, you got to warm up your equipment. So we're going to let that run for a little bit. And I'm going to go ahead and find my remote here, which I have right here. So it'll still work, even though it's on low power mode. But it's not very smart to use it on low power mode. So we're going to let it warm up. And we're actually going to go ahead and slide it out of the van. Now the generator is turned on it's warmed up and now it's time to start using the remote here so like i said in an ideal scenario where you're at your client's house if you're letting the general uh generator warm up maybe you want to take out the floor mats maybe you want to talk to the client maybe you want to prepare and prep the vehicle for the vacuum or i don't know whatever you want to do you could do it as your business your detailing strategies your detailing methods you do whatever you want so right here we have numbers one through three so one is going to always be our vacuum there's an on and an off button on here. And then two is gonna be the compressor. There's a on and off switch for that as well for all of them. So like I said earlier, number three is gonna be our water pump. So we're gonna do that one first. So we're gonna turn on the water pump. It's on. I heard it, I don't know if you guys can catch it. Maybe it's hard to hear on camera, but it turned on. And like I said earlier, we're gonna press this big button up here once we know and can certify and approve that water is coming out from the from the hose here now once that water is coming out we can come over here to our pressure washer button and press the big button up top boom now it's on now we can simply use our i forgot what mtm uh done here and we could just start washing the pressure washer wheels All right, so if you didn't know, everything, it, it does come on reels. So this reel right here is gonna be the pressure washer one, of course, and it has this little slide thing here where you can turn and lock it so it doesn't move and stuff like that. So we'll lock it and it doesn't move as much. So we'll go ahead and unlock it so we can easily start pulling our cord. This is a 50 foot, they're all 50 foot. And then we just look, put it back. Like so, lock this so it doesn't move anywhere, and there we go. All right, so now we're gonna get into the fun stuff. We're gonna try our compressor now. So our compressor gun is actually right here, and all we're simply gonna go ahead and do is detach it from here with a quick disconnect, pull it down, and then we just simply connect it to our compressor hose reel, which is right here. We'll try to do this with one hand, and there we go, we got it since there was no air in there. So we're gonna go ahead and use the remote. But once again, click on two, because two is our pressure. Let it fill up. One thing I also wanna note is I'm a little like, I'm like 10, 20, 30, I'm not good with distances, but I'm not that far from the van and you guys can hear that it's not that, that loud. You can easily hold a conversation with a client near the vehicle. It's just once you get really close to the stuff, it's gonna be loud, of course, especially when you get close to like the um, pressure washer and the air compressor and stuff like that. It does get a little bit louder, but I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to turn the door real quick. Just pull it out. And 
and that's simple right just turn it on you know and get to work so the last thing i want to show you all real quick and i'll show you all the rest of the van is going to be the air uh not the air vacuum the vacuum here so the vacuum is connected also to the remote start we're going to go ahead and press number one here and it's going to turn it on again we have the off and on switch so we're going to turn on the vacuum Got to see it on. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and turn everything off, and then I'll show y'all the rest of the van. Give me a second. All right, so everything is off in the van now. I just want to show y'all the rest of the van build before I end the video. So here we have all of our gallon size and a few extra products and stuff like that. I still need to buy some stuff. It seems like the air compressor is leaking a bit of air from over here somewhere so we probably just got to tighten that up a little bit which shouldn't be too bad so we have our five and a half inch pad here i tried to put the six inch pads in here but they just didn't work out and then we have our flex polisher up here with another griots garage polisher just for backup just in case we need it and then we have the pressure washer which is a ryobi uh 1.8 1.5 gallon something like that works out pretty well and then we have the rigid of course air compressor there and also a rigid vacuum right next to it this right here is just for the winter time for when we need to heat up water or whatever we need you know need to do and again i'm gonna just put all this stuff back in the van real quick and usually where we spend our you know most of our time is going to be back here right this is where we keep all the products we keep all the brushes and you know stuff like this in here uh drill brushes just you know everything we need is back here in the uh back side so what we're gonna go ahead and do is show you guys the products that we use and stuff like that and then we'll end the video there so these two bottles are our interior cleaner slash interior shine. These two are tire shine. And then we usually have one, maybe two spray waxes or ceramic spray waxes right there. So that's the only three things that we use. We just double up on them. There's the same thing as just two of them. And that way we always, if you run out of one, we can just quickly pick up the other one. So up here we have some paint correction stuff just chilling over here. And then we have a backup tire shine, glass cleaner, and some soap here. Now with the soap, we also have the foam cannon, which is also on quick disconnect right here, hanging there, kind of just chilling. And we, you know, keep it there because that's its place. And then we also have an electrical cord here, which we use for our steamer or maybe our cord uh, or corded polisher there. So everything locks up as well, you guys. So you can always make sure you lock up your stuff so it's not sliding everywhere and then we have just a random gas thing for when we need to fill up and stuff like that right here we have dirty towels right here we have our clean towels and then we have a little tote bag which i sometimes use for detailing the interior right behind that we have the batteries and the battery chargers this is always on power pot at power strip there and i love that setup i love that part because you can always just charge up your batteries and not have to worry about you know running out of battery charge or whatever and on this side we can't put too much because the toolbox is here so what we did was we put this brush holder here with our tire shine brush our carpet shine uh carpet cleaning brush and then detailing brushes and stuff like that but yeah this is the the back of the van the full complete setup i'm trying to block the sun here and then again this is the other side the drop the passenger side nothing much to see but we're gonna go ahead and head off to detail some cars today. Appreciate you guys for watching. Go ahead and make sure you guys like, comment, share, subscribe. If you need any advice, any questions, any tips, you make sure you comment down below and I'll try my best to help you guys out. Now, all of the the um, the connections and stuff like that on the remote start and stuff like that was all done by Routers Details. I'll make sure to link it down below so you guys can check them out because all I know is that it's there. I'm not too sure or too knowledgeable on how to set it up and how to put the wire in and all that stuff together. I'm just not an, uh, an electrician, right? So all I know is remote starts connected to to the plugs and then the plugs are always on. So the vacuum is always turned on, the compressor is always turned on. But right here is where we turn it off. So 
hopefully you guys get a better understanding on this build and the setup and stuff like that i'll go ahead and make a separate video show you guys you know step by step how we use it and actually do a detail with a car and hopefully you guys enjoy that so stay tuned hustle never settles subscribe if you haven't catch you guys in the next one any video suggestions or anything like that comment them down below and i'll catch you guys on the next one let's go